and welcome back to Review Station here at Tubley Road. This logo has been a long time in the making, hasn't it? Finally, in today's Review Station, we'll be looking at the all-new Hornby LNER P2. So, let's get straight into today's video. We'll be looking what we get in the box, we'll be looking at the details and features of the model, and we'll be giving it its first run here on the layout and a running session to end the video. So straight off, the packaging. Now I haven't bought a model from Hornby in quite some time and they have definitely upgraded their boxes and packaging much better than they used to be. It's full of foam in there, the loco is well protected in the box. I like the way it looks. Very nice looking box. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because it's just a box really. As usual, we get the uh, sort of operator's manual, I could say, there you are. Class P2, you just open it up onto this page and it gives you an idea, if it actually wants to open that is, there we go. It gives you the oiling points and how to fit the decoder and all the rest of it like that as well. So yeah, we're not going to spend too much time on that. And this is the first thing that's impressed me. Look at the extensive detail impact we get with this and I've even spotted a driver and fireman there. Wow, and we get the edge plates, we get brake rigging. There is a front coupler, but I will never be fitting that. We do have an alternative wheel if you haven't got sharp curves on your layout, which I don't think I should fit that. We have the pipe work and all that, so that's a really, really good detail in pack there, Hornby. Yeah, very nice. And there, you can see the loco itself. Koi really has some presence about it, doesn't it? So let's get up and close to the locomotive to see what it's really like. Here is the uh, first close-up shot of the LNER P2. Straight away, yeah, it, as I said, it really does have some presence. We do have sprung metal buffers. We do have a separately fitted whistle and smoke box door dart. You can see the vacuum pipe has already been fitted and we do have a location hole there for the realistic coupler. And you can just see there, just here, is where you fit the NEM pocket if you want to do that, but as I said, I won't be doing it. And we do have a separately fitted handrail here. Do love the shape, the curve here. Really looks rather nice. Not like any other locomotive, is it? A bit more detail for you, and straight away you can see the name, Prince of Wales. Of course, I would go for this one, and this is the locomotive they are building in real life, don't forget, from new. This is not the etch plate, this is printed and it's been done so well, the printing is of extremely high quality. Actually all the lining on this locomotive is, and you can see that all the way over the boiler, the boiler bands, you can see the lining around the cylinders is done really well, and you've got all this valve gear here really looks the part. The only issue I'm not too keen on is this. See how flimsy that is? It's not connected to anything, this bit here. So be very careful. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know if they could have done any better, but that may be just me. And as you can see, this is a 282, which is quite an unusual uh, wheel arrangement here in the UK. The driving wheels really, really do look particularly nice. Obviously metal, lined, painted extremely well. And I said that valve gear in motion really looks the part, doesn't it? So if we keep going, we do have some detail there on the running plate. We have a metal handrail running across here. There's handrail separately fitted parts. If we go to the cab area then, if we can move the local around slowly, we got the, the number just here, which is 2007, and the maker's plate there, which is probably legible, if I have better eyesight, that is. Down here, where the pony truck is, we do have lining all the way around there, and it is pre-fitted with the flangeless wheel just there to help going round curves, which is always helpful, isn't it? If we keep going, then we go to the tender. You might be able to notice the coupling that it's got, which I'll show you soon. The tender is really, really nice. The LNER is picked out perfectly, and also the lining all the way around here is complete perfection on this. We do have handrails here, and here front and back of the tender and all this is lined down here as well and you can see we got an eight wheeled tender so let's have a look at the other end then there we go here is a close-up look at the tender again we do have these sprung buffers the coupling is already fitted along with the hook and the vacuum pipe we do have separately fitted steps and handrails 
If we go down this side of the model, we do have some other detailing to show you. If I just bring it up to the camera, you can see this detail in here. Again, all separately fitted and painted, really looking the part, isn't it? Very impressive so far with this locomotive. A close look at the cab detail now on this new Hornby locomotive, and it is really rather impressive. Everything's done really well here. You've got all the gauges have been painted and picked out to a high standard. You've got all the copper piping, loads of more gauges all the way around the water glass. Driver and fireman seat where you can fit the crew, as we saw in the detail impact. And there, the firebox is a working firebox. We do have a flickering LED there. And just here, you might be able to make it out, this is a metal plate just here, which goes from the locomotive to the tender, so it doesn't look so... And it is um, poseable. You can move it up and down depending on how you want it. And here is that loco to tender coupling I mentioned earlier. It's far better than the old Hornby connection where you had that drawbar and that horrible electrical connection. Really wasn't good. But Hornby have upgraded and I believe this is the first model that has this. Correct me if I'm wrong but as I said I haven't had a Hornby loco for quite some time. So all you can do just be a bit careful because it might you don't want to break it when you just sort of there we go make sure it's lined up and then done how much better is that and if you're worried about it coming apart oh wow no that is not coming apart that you'll have to put some fair force into that so no problems there so what we're going to do we're going to get the locomotive onto the layout itself to see how it runs and performs so let's get it to the track here we are on the layout itself with the new Hornby P2 this locomotive has not been run yet, so this will be really interesting to see how it runs straight out of the box. This is a DCC ready locomotive, so I'll be running it with my Gage Master controller. This does have an upgraded 21 pin socket for the decoder instead of the usual 8 we used to get from Hornby, so that's a nice upgrade. As I said, this is DCC ready, so let's go in reverse, as always, to see how this locomotive performs. So I'm just going to ease it up on the controller. I might sound far away at the moment because I'm down the other end of the layout. That's where the controller is. So let's see what happens if we slowly ease the power up and see what we get. Oh yeah, there we go. That's not too bad. It's a tad jumpy there, I think. But obviously this is the first time it's ever been run. So let's bring it back the other way. Ah, there we go. That's much better, isn't it? Yeah, very smooth running locomotive there. Yeah, it seems to be much better going uh, going forward than backwards, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that's... Well, that was its first run. I don't think you... Can ask much better than that, straight out of the box, really rather impressive. In conclusion then, what do I think of the all new Hornby P2? Overall, it's a very good locomotive from Hornby and a very nice upgrade from what we usually get from them. They have seem to have spent quite a bit of time and effort on this one, which does show. The recommended retail price then of these is quite a lot, is £254, which no matter which way you look at it, that's an awful lot of money. I didn't pay that. You can get these from the retailers, which I did from Hatton's, and I paid 2 2 9 for it, which is a better price. Mind you, you are getting a, quite a lot of locomotive. Two things to touch on quickly. I was hoping the locomotive would weigh quite a bit more than it does. It's not a lo light locomotive by any means. Just because of the size, I expect it to be heavier. We do have a die cast chassis and running board. The running board on this is different to the A4 front, I believe. The A4 fronted P2 has plastic. Not sure the reason for that, but apparently it does. And the only other thing, I did have a quick test run with it before this conclusion. It does seem to slow down on curves and up any incline you have on your layouts. Possibly not quite enough torque in that motor. It's noticeable, but not really bad. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching my review on the all-new Hornby LNER P2.
Well done Hornby, really nice model. I'm going to leave you now with it running around the layout so you can get some nice scenery shots around the locomotive as well. Don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this locomotive. I'll be back here at Jubilee Road or on location very soon. Bye everyone.